let me just say that it's been an honor. It's been a privilege. It's been something real. We did something that no one expected. We fought back against all of India. And we fought bravely, goddammit. Well, we all knew it was bound to come to an end at some point. The sub gap is left less than 50,000. We used all our cards. We got nothing left. We got nothing and no one. Elon Musk, where are you? Where are you, Elon? Where's the Super Bowl land, Mr. Beast? Wall Street Journal. Furries are now illegal in Germany. Oh, well, all right then, when then he balances out, then it's okay. Good evening, I'm Gloria Borger. I'm not supposed to have my opinion, but finally they put the furries in jail. That is excellent. Thumbs up, Gloria. All right. Welcome to Pew News. We have a lot of stories to cover, a lot of oopsies to go through. Number one, oopsie number one revolves PewDiePie did an oopsie. The BBC did a story on the whole PewDiePie hacking, and uh, well, first of all, absolutely beautiful vector art. What is that nose and beard? Thank you, BBC. Very cool. And they ask the question here in the title: Could hacking printers ruin your life? And um, I'm gonna go ahead and say no, no it didn't, at least in this case. You probably heard about the printer hack already where a couple hackers hacked a printers to po print the, the poster saying subscribe to PewDiePie. You know, it was a combination of a good meme for a funny cause, but also doing something positive in a sense of it's a hack that spreads awareness that people's printers are actually unprotected. And that's probably something you should fix. I mean, I heard even police stations printed them, so it's pretty concerning. It's raising awareness for that, but BBC kind of showed more the the, uh, the dark side of this whole hack. Four hacks, one YouTube star. Someone hacked printers. Overnight fame, global news, then they vanished. Whoa! They went incognito! <laughs> then they vanished. FBI is like, where did they go? <laughs> Beautiful editing. <laughs> the Swedish comedian's army of followers got to work. A bizarre campaign was launched, including billboards, leafleting and posters. One fan, calling himself Hacker Giraffe, decided to take it to an extreme, even criminal level. He hacked an estimated 50,000 printers, forcing them to produce a poster in support of PewDiePie. Those poor printers, without consent printed this black and white image. I can't believe it. This criminal level. If anything, these kids should get hired for doing something uh, groundbreaking. It's so weird that they go on this illegal level. Like, yeah, technically, you're not allowed to do that. I'm sure. I don't know. Honestly, I don't, honestly don't even know. I was involved in the PewDiePie Internet of Things hacks. Damn. I'm gonna tell you how we did it, but I'm gonna tell you it honestly. They're talking about it like they broke into a bank and stole a bunch of money or something. Like, <laughs> I was completely blinded by the whole fun aspect of it. It did feel exciting. I felt kind of like a, you know, a hero. Like, I'm gonna change the world and, and, and you know, actually make a difference. I felt like I was doing good. Like, after this, vulnerable printers are going to drop. For Giraffe and User, it was the exposure they'd been dreaming of. But then, everything changed. When the Fire Nation attack! Are they being sarcastic? Because they make it look like it's murder. Yeah, exactly. The tone of this is so strange. This number here was about 70, 60,000. And now it's dropped down to 39,000. So I believe through our attacks, a positive difference in these people are securing the printers. Well, there you go. There you go, everyone. There's no doubt that fun and fame was a big part of the motivation here, but these teen hackers have made an impact in an area where security is an increasing concern. We don't know whether or not the authorities are trying to find them. There's a good chance they'll be looking over their shoulders. The authorities! We need to get that giraffe. The idea that they have to look over their shoulder in case they would ever get arrested for the printer hack I don't know, man. It doesn't really seem that accurate, but that's just my opinion, which I'm not supposed to have. Next news. 
James Charles, everyone's favorite YouTuber. <laughs> Visited the UK and it was absolute madness. <laughs> Apparently, there were so many people that came to James Charles. I think it's his new makeup palette, I'm not sure. Or meet and greet thing. That the whole mall just shut down. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, the whole mall just got completely overrun. Apparently, it blocked traffic so that people couldn't come home. Uh, from work afterwards, and it was just overall madness. But a lot of people directed that uh, annoyance, which is understandable that if you can't get home or whatever. Uh, they directed that to James Charles, obviously, which is also a kind of a dumbass way to look at things, because clearly this is not his fault, or at least maybe not directly. So let's look at some reactions from the news uh, about this whole event. It took me an hour and a half to get home. How long did it take you to get home? That's about the same. About the same. <laughs> yeah. But actually, I did for a makeup star. I mean, oh, you yeah. do beautiful makeup. Why? You know, you get yourself that, on YouTube. That's because I take advice from a woman, not a man. Oh, what the heck? What kind of comment is that? What the hell, man? That's because I take advice from a woman. From a woman. Boys can't do makeup, you silly little boys. I love the smug faces she make. They make as well. Like, <laughs> I think I like mama bear. An article by Mail Online came out about this as well and said, "Hootube, <laughs> virtually unknown US blogger, virtually unknown." <laughs> And his 8,000 screaming fans bring Birmingham city center to a shock standstill with extra police drafted amid crush fears as he opens cosmetic store. Oh, he opens a cosmetic store, okay. James Charles responded with, virtually unknown and 8,000 screaming fans should not be used in the same sentence. I, uh, I noticed that they, uh, they changed his headline as well. It now says that, uh, I don't know, you as makeup blogger and it's 8,000. Great, there you go. So they realized at least. I also really like this radio recording. Yeah. Um, but his ch oh no, I think he gets 10 million viewers. That's very different to uh, hits. Yep. <laughs> so, what's going on? Oh, three, four, five, six, oh, six, oh, nine, seven, three. What, what, what does this say about fame in the modern? Because newspaper journalists usually, <laughs> as a former showbiz journalist, I, I, I cover fame. Why are, why don't I know about James Charles? Oh. Given that I read every newspaper every day. Oh three four five six oh six. I like how he answered his own question. Why do I know about this YouTuber? Because I read the news. Because I, I feel very sorry for West Midlands Police. How the hell could they have been known? Oh my God. Why am I uneducated on this matter? I read the news every day. Do you watch Pew News? Because then we wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> I don't know, it's funny to me because uh, I don't know that much about James Charles to be honest, but he never struck me as like that con- well maybe he is actually. Uh, <laughs> it's more like I expect this kind of treatment for uh, for PewDiePie with the, the kind of snarky sarcasm and, and the oh who is this guy or whatever. But the fact that other YouTubers get also get the same treatment is kind of- it's almost sad in a way. It's always so spiteful and uh, uh, with a tone of jealousy whenever there is reporting of new media coming from old media, essentially. This failure to understand it just makes them look so pity and ignorant without realizing it themselves, honestly. So, next news! The Shorty Awards! Yay! The Shorty Awards! The most respected award show of all time. Hey, I won- I mean, Petey Pius won a Shorty Award. It broke in the mail. I'm sorry, Shorty Awards. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't send a piece of glass in the mail. That's just my opinion. <laughs> People were mad at the, at how badly the nominations were. For example, the meme parody account, the most important category of all time. I mean, where's Dolan Dark? Where's Grande? Huh? You tell me. Why is the same picture of Chris Pratt nominated? Okay, this sh tired. This sh old. Get it out of my sight. I'm not supposed to have my opinion. This is garbage. I know none of these memes, sirs. Really, the only reason I bring up this story is because uh, I don't mean to break people's bubble here. Essentially, all award shows, they're garbage, okay? They're bogus. It's just a play that everyone plays into. It's a charade that everyone plays into, I guess you could say. You know, you really want it to be something that actually commemorates and congratulates 
uh, the people that did well a certain year, but that's rarely the case. It's more about who's there to accept the award. It's more about how can they bring as much attention to their award show as possible with these fake votings or whatever that doesn't really make a difference. And it's all kind of bullshit and politics and corporate shilling. Don't believe me? The Black Panther. Black Panther was uh, an Oscar nominee. For what category you might ask? Maybe best soundtrack? No! Best picture! Best picture Black Panther everyone! Of course! Of course it is! I like this story as well. Brett Easton Ellis questions Black Panther Oscar nomination for Best Picture. Does it really deserve one? <laughs> I like how that's news. They might as well put Brett Easton Ellis says what's on everyone's mind. <laughs> how dare you question the Black Panther being Oscar nominated for Best Picture? How could you? Listen, I would love for award shows to be what they actually appear to be. I'm just saying they're not, okay? And if you were level 10,000 woke like I am, then maybe you would realize. Oopsie number something. Next news. We're going fast and we're going hard today, boys. Ariana Grande <laughs> got a tattoo. This is my favorite story this month. Ariana Grande mocked for Japanese typo. Basically, Ariana Grande got a tattoo. Uh, she posted it on her Instagram or Twitter or whatever. No one cares. A hand tattoo. First of all, great idea, Ariana Grande. Hand tattoos are always a great idea. So basically what the Japanese symbols are saying is Japanese barbecue grill. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently she missed out on a couple of characters. So I don't know what it was supposed to mean, but she ended up with Japanese barbecue grill, everyone. And that's a, that's a nice, that's a nice tattoo to have. But my extra large grilling machine with temperature control makes preparing delicious food quick and easy. It's yours for just $99.98 plus shipping and handling. Call 1-800-659-7474 now. Now people obviously were quick to point out uh, this mistake. Ariana Grande is vegan as well. <laughs> she was offered a million dollar for laser tattoo <laughs> removal. Uh, I was supposed to say seven rings. But she had to chat. Like, double check. If you get Hiragana or Kanji or whatever, make sure you know what the f you put on there. It shouldn't be that hard. It's funny how this happened to Ariana Grande because I also got a tattoo on my hand recently. It says ass for Animal Super Squad, the game that I have. Oh, gee, I sure hope he doesn't have any other meaning. So she had to add in a couple extra letters to, uh, to fit to make sure it meant what it meant. So now she just have it on her palm. Great job. Please, if you ever get a tattoo, just make sure you double check it, okay? It's always good to double check things that will last forever. Just a small little hint that maybe wasn't obvious, apparently. Next news. Takeshi. Okay, these news are hilarious. I love this so much. Takeshi uh, pleads guilty to nine criminal counts detailed in the book. So as you guys, as we reported recently on Pew News, Takeshi 69 was arrested for uh, racketeering, and uh, it looked pretty bad for 69. It looks like he was going to face a long time in prison. And now we have an actual estimate of what that number is going to be. Since he pled guilty, he could face up to 47 years of, of prison. Now, why is this number so important? Well, he is 22. He's been sentenced to 47 years in prison. Takeshi 69 will get out of jail when he is 69. <laughs> if this is not an example of a self-fulfilling prophecy, I don't know what is. God bless you, Takeshi. Next news: YouTube star Austin Jones pleads guilty to producing child porn. This was a story back in 2015, uh, where this YouTuber admitted to asking fans to twerk on camera for them. Uh, mind you, this is underage fans as well. Your opinion based off of the full story and the truth. This guy looks like such a smug little asshole, just in and of itself. And the things he said in his response video. Yes, twerking the dance move. It's not something that I'm proud of. It's not something that I think is right. And I shouldn't have done it. 
Austin basically says, uh, it was just twerking videos and, and that was it. Now the full story comes out and he pleads guilty to have photos and videos and then he tried to get others to do the same. The federal complaints details videos and conversations with two 14 year old girls including at one point Jones trying to get the girl to take her clothes off by telling her to prove she is his biggest fan. She doesn't want to have to crying. find someone else. He had two girls on camera, 14 year old, telling them to dress, take their clothes up to prove that they're his biggest fan. Like, that's just straight up disgusting, manipulative. It's kind of shit that makes you ashamed to be a YouTuber. I guess this guy will be twerking in prison from now on. A lot of oopsies going on, guys. I'm not supposed to give my opinion, but goddamn, I love it. <laughs> now, lastly, uh, this is not an oopsie. I don't know how to talk about this. I don't know what to say, but Eugenia Cooney uploaded this video a few days ago, and I just really want people to send her uh, as much support and love as possible. And I mean, I really mean that. I think that's the only thing she needs right now. And I hope that she will listen to people and try and understand where they're coming from and actually hopefully get some help. Because she honestly seems like a lovely girl and this is just scary to look at. That's it for Pew News. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Remember to give lots of love and kisses to the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Oh my god, please subscribe. I'm s we have to make it a Super Bowl at least. Come on guys. The season finale. We can't quit now. I'm Poppy Harlow, and this is what's Jablin' Jables. Oh my-